For sure, I want to uh, relax and say thanks to you. you know, uh, well, put it this way, it's Cornerstone's favorite group. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing us into heavenly places with that uh, rendition. And if there is one door that we would want to unlock today, it is the door of heaven. What do you say? Amen. Amen? Yes. Faith unlocks the door. Yes. So I hope that today our faith will take us to the very door. Our prayers will take us to the door and our faith will cause the door to swing open so that we can get a response from our God. We are here to worship God and I greet you in the name of Jesus. Yeah? And I uh, hope that as we worship today that the, the Spirit of God will enfold us that the Spirit of God will embrace us, that we will feel His presence above us, in us, and around us. Amen? Amen. Let us free ourselves of everything that has the potential to distract us. And let us become so focused that we will see only God, not even see me. Because I am a distraction. But I hope you will see God. And I pray that you will hear God even though I am standing up here speaking and speaking with the aid of an amplified song. I hope you will hear God louder than you hear me, clearer than you hear me. And even if I make a mistake, I hope you will hear God right. Amen. 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 I'm trying to get you in the more knowledge. And I ask you at this time to bow your heads with me. Let us pray and ask for that infilling of our hearts that that possessing of our minds so that God will be seen and heard Father I stand again in a familiar position but I stand oh God knowing that if I am the one on show, it will be a failed show. Because who am I? Without you, I'm nothing. But with you, God, I can be anything you want me to be. I pray, therefore, Lord, that you will not allow me to stand here alone. But stand thou in a place where I will be overshadowed. Manipulate my every move, my every word. Take full possession and control of my lips, my thoughts, and my expressions. And Lord, while you will aid and abet me in the delivery of the message, Please aid and abet each hearer in the reception of the message. So it will be totally you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I am speaking to you on a subject as advertised, expect much. Expect much. That eh? expect big. Yeah? 
expecting it. Okay, right. Maybe I had much in mind, but it came up. Well, that's the thing. But much of being, yeah? Expect being. And uh, I am going to be asking for the assistance of a child that can read, a woman that can read, and a man that can read. If you fall into that category, uh, just stand up and come down front and I'm going to ask you to read a passage and I'm going to move away from you know the place that's not my favorite area to where it's more favorite. Well, the man is here first. I need a woman to stand. A woman is coming. And I need a child. All right. Well, I'm going to ask the man to read. Uh, okay. A child is coming with the assistance of the family. All right. So I'm going to ask the man to read from Exodus, the fourth chapter. Read verses 2 to 4 and verse 17. So that's Exodus 4, verses 2 to 4 and 17. The word of God says, And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. 17. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Amen. Or now I'm going to ask the woman to read from. First Kings chapter 17 and you're going to read verses 10 through to 13. First Kings 17, 10 to 13. Eight and nine. 
John 6, verses 8 and 9. Fear the Lord. 
and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born the men. Now, here is one point that we must not miss. As we read, we need to understand that righteousness, being righteous, does not disqualify you from hardship. Hello? Because you are righteous, because you are upright, it does not disqualify you from hardship. In fact, when you look at the, the Bible in its entirety, it would seem as if righteousness qualifies you for hardship. But hardship does not disqualify you from salvation. Amen. In fact, it seems to prepare you for salvation. Because, you see, hardship has, has a way of pushing you. Come on, talk to me now. I, I want to talk to you today, but I want you to talk with me, yeah? The hardship has a way of pushing you against God. Mm. Yes. Come on. Am I talking to you? Yes. And when you are pushed against God, you are pushed against the best source of defense. In fact, you are pushed against the rock of your salvation. In today's language, however, the way Christianity is preached, it would seem as if there is a smooth sea that we are supposed to sail on if we have the Lord. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. That's, in, in fact, all of us somehow in the back of our minds seem to think that if I am righteous with the Lord, then my heart will be all right. But I hear Jesus say, look here, you're not better than me. I am no master. And if I ever had it easy in this world, you don't think for one minute that you're going to have it easy. Because the world don't like you. Am I, am I right? And, and, and we are in a world right now that is under the control of the God of this world. And the God of this world is not on our side. Hello? So we need to be aware of that. So when things are not going right as it should be with you, in spite of the fact that there are numerous promises by God that he will defend us and befriend us and protect us and he will guide us and he will feed us and he will prosper us, we must understand that it is not saying that we are going to have smooth sailing. What I hear God saying is that in spite of what the enemy will do to you, I will be there for you. Now, so here was a man who feared God according to his, his resume, which was not written by him. Come on now, come to me. I want you to talk to me a little while. I want you to be in it with me. Are you in it with me? Yes. When a wife can give you a good resume, you have a resume. Yes. Come on, guys. Yes, true. Yeah? And, and obviously this man, 
was a good husband because his wife gave him a good resume. Yeah. And I tell you, well, 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 you know, well, you're African, you don't know where to Hey, man, let me tell you something. The hardest person to get a good resume, you're going to get married. I tell you, see that woman that is sitting beside you, you're married to her. Man, after you're married to this woman, you're going to ask, what transpired between the outer and the... <laughs> The hardest person to get a good resume from is your wife. <laughs> yeah. The truth, Jackie, I tell you something. <sighs> there is nothing, nothing, nothing that I can think of that is simple about a woman. She's the most complex. Creature that God created. Yeah. The nicest, the best, and at, so, at other times, oh my God, you have to wonder what happened. But I hear that they have different seasons at the same time, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing my wife isn't in here. <laughs> and don't tell her anything. <laughs> Spring, summer, autumn, winter, all in one day. Extreme highs, extreme lows, and sometimes nice, calm, and whoo, hallelujah. But this man died, and his wife was able to stand up before the man of God and said, You know that my husband feared the Lord. Amen. He was a good man. Amen. He was a good man. Amen. But obviously, in spite of how much he feared the Lord and how good a man he was, life was not easy for the family. Amen. So guess what? He ended up borrowing. Mm -hmm. mm. And he, he you know, I said I'm going to extrapolate while, you know, I was trying to preach the gospel. Here is something that we all need to be aware of. I was looking at our local author, Sister Mac, uh, Sister Dolores uh, thing, uh, and, and, and I, I noticed that she said something. I will not quote her verbatim, but this is the essence of what she said. Say, once you are indebted, you lose your freedom. Once you are indebted, you lose your freedom. And I just want to say to us all, not just to men, I'm saying it to all, we need to be careful who we borrow from. Mm -hmm. We need to be careful who we borrow from. For you see, for as the Bible says, Sister Dolores did mention that in her in, in, in Proverbs 22, the Bible says that the, the, the rich, come on, rules over who? The poor and the what? The borrower is what? A slave to the lender. I think that's not in Proverbs 22, verse 7. The borrower is a slave. To the lender. Mm. Yeah? And you see, it's talking sense to us who are living in a world where it is normal to borrow. Hello? It's normal to borrow. God knows if all of us in here are not borrowers right now. You know, we, we need to take a little time and read that book that Sister Dolores wrote. I'm not here picking her up. I'm just saying what she wrote makes sense. Yeah. yeah? Because, you know, folks, you see that credit card thing? You see 
see that credit card thing? Yeah. You know it's a, it's a loan, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a loan. And there are so many of us who are indebted. Well, well she says, cut up the car. <laughs> Say, get the scissors, cut the car up. Yeah? He, here is the reality that we need to understand. We make ourselves slaves to the system. Yeah. Yeah. We make ourselves slaves to the system. Sometimes, here is something that I need to make clear. Sometimes our indebtedness is unwarranted. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's not every time that you are indebted because of hardship. There are times when life's situations pushes you to the point where your only way out is to borrow. That is different from just borrowing because it is the norm. They, 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 there was nothing you can say about those who were enslaved because the slave masters overpowered them and enslaved them. They were captured and hauled off like cargo and who survived were sold into slavery. You can't say that those people were stupid. No. They were overpowered by the situations of life. But when we have our freedom and, you know, just because we want what is advertised, mm, just because we want what is advertised, we we go into debt. Mm. We enslave ourselves. Oh, I wish to God I was here talking to more than just you. And I was talking to some of the leaders of some of our countries, like our beloved country, Jamaica, and the parts of Africa, and so many other countries where we are actually borrowing from China. Amen. And, and, and soon we don't realize that what is going to happen is that the creditor is going to come. Yes, the, the, the because when you cannot, when you cannot pay back, they are going to take what you have. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. This man of God found himself in a situation I cannot stay here and say that he was careless. No, I can't say. His wife said he was a good man. So let's say he was a good man. Found himself in a bad situation and had to borrow and had to make a pledge that in case I cannot pay that, then you will have to take me. And in case I am not around, my son's hard deals. Come on. Hard deals. And that's what we do when we buy a house we don't own. Hello? We buy houses when we don't own them. Because if you don't pay the mortgage, they will come for it. Yeah, and anything you have that you can call asset will become liability. We have to understand that that is the way society is. The one percent of the rich dominate the ninety plus percent of the very poor. And is it because the poor is foolish? It's the way the God of this world has set things up. But there are some of us who buy into stupidness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We go for one 
what is advertised. Your child wants a car. I don't want an old car. I need, you know, a new car that I won't have to be spending on it and whatever. And oh, so, so much to make your child feel comfortable. Buy a child a new car with what you don't own. Yeah? Here is the reality that I want to put you into. Sometimes life puts you into situations that your only way out is to borrow. Yeah. But even then you must be careful what you borrow and who you borrow from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be careful what you borrow and be careful who you borrow from. They say that uh, when you borrow, when you take out mortgages or loans, there are some things that are written in fine print. And most times because they know that you and I are not going to take the time off to read the fine print, they load it on and, and, and then they not in fine print. In readable print, they write, I accept. Yes. And so you overlook the fine prints and you go down to I accept or I agree and you sign on the dotted line, not realizing that in the fine print you have pledged away just about everything that you have. And sometimes, it is not like that. I, I, I believe that the man of God, you know, made a choice. Believing that he would bounce back. Yeah? yeah. yeah? So he said, take me or take my son. But I guess if you were Jamaican, you would say, over my dead body, you're not going to have my sons because I'm going to work my shirt off to pay back this road. But what he did on you is that he was going to work himself to death trying to pay back that loan. That happened, he died. And now the creditor, merciless, adamant, child, come. You made a deal. It's time. It's time for you to put it in an agreement. Well, what do you do? What do you do? I guess you could run and go borrow again. But I love what this woman did. I love what this woman did. You know what the woman did? She went to the man of God. Yeah. No? Yeah. And, and that's something to you and I for. Before we go to see the financial advisor, go to God. Yeah. Take it to the Lord in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything, including our financial woes to God in prayer. Go to God first. That's what the woman did. She went and she cried out to the man of God. Yeah. And she, she, she said, you know, you know my husband, he was a good man. He died, he has died, and the creditor, the creditor is come to take my two boys. to be enslaved. I just want to say this for 
we are slaves to who we are. Yeah. But you know one thing I love out of this? Paul speaks a lot about him being a slave to Jesus. Because yeah. yes, yes. Jesus paid it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus paid it all. The church is there to help its members right. yeah. in its problems. Yeah. Yeah. He did not drive her away. Yeah. No. He, he, he said, what do you want me to do? But following up on that question, he asked, what do you have in your house? Yeah. Come on. anymore but write it down in your brain nobody has nothing everybody has something yeah? yes. nobody has nothing everybody has something yes. are you with me yes. don't ever say there is nothing that I have tell God what you have you have something Moses what's that in your hand a rod I preached a few weeks ago and I told you that Moses was expecting to have a scepter, not a rod. And he could have said to God, I ain't got nothing, but he said, I have a rod. One of the things that you and I need to identify is what it is that we have. We need to identify what we have that we can entrust God with to get what we want. Expect big, but you need to have something, even if it's little. Are you with me? Yes. Oh, come on. Yes. What is it that you have? The widow woman said, all I've got this other widow woman that the woman read about. All that I have is a handful of uh, meal and a little oil in a flask. And all that we can do with this little that we have is cook enough for our last meal. Come on, talk to somebody. I said, sometimes you are going to be down to your very last meal as far as you are concerned. But what you don't know is that as far as God is concerned, that is just one meal for many, many years to come. Hello, are you with me? When Satan, come on, no, don't even say Satan. When the knife pushes you to your last meal, come on, somebody. I said, when situation in life forces you down to your last dollar, when situation in life forces you to your last, your very last, your very last, or whatever, yeah. it's never over. Until God says it is over. Amen. The church needs to say amen. amen. <laughs> you, 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 we are wrong to say I'm gonna die. Because you don't control life. God does. You don't have to see. Can I tell you this? You don't have to see your way out to get out. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. You just need to know that God is in control. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's the word. The woman 
and say, Oh, this is all I've got. This is all I've got. Elijah said, That's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. God does not want what you don't have. God just wants what you have. Yeah. And sometimes the church would be so much better if we would only serve God with what we have. But sometimes we want what we don't have. Yes. Oh, you want this singer, you want this preacher, and you want this, that, and you know you cannot use what you don't have. And God will not use what you don't have to do what He wants you to do. God is going to use what you have, but you must be willing to what you have and acknowledge that this is what you have all Moses had was a rod but God says take it with you yes. and with it you are going to do great signs and wonders yes. Elijah, Elijah said to the woman yeah that's all you have but go put God first hello make me a little cake first and you know, bring me that little water with it. And he says, as the Lord live it, that uh, little barrel of flour and that little flask of oil will not go dry. And you and your household will eat and drink for many days. Amen. 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 Expect big. Yes. Even though you have little. Come on, I'm not talking to you. Yes. What did I say? Yes. Expect me. Even though you have little. Yes. And uh, of course, we had little reader reading the story of that big, massive, humongous crowd that was up there on the mountaintop listening to the word of God. It was time for them to eat and Jesus gave the command, give ye them to eat and guess what? He was testing the disciples. That's what John said. And Philip was able to say, well, even if we had, you know, what was the bakery around here? The famous bakery around the Tintel. Even if, if all of Cobb's, you know, was going to be at our disposal. We would be able to feed all of these people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We, we wouldn't be able to. It's impossible. But what was it? Andrew or Nathaniel, one of them said, you know, there's a little boy. Come on. Yeah. Come on, church. Yeah. There's a little boy around here. Yeah. Where is he? He was, I guess he was hungry, you know. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess he was so hungry that he was able to count the boy's lunch yeah. as he opened it. Yeah. You know, that little boy, I, I, I'm just imagining it now, yeah. Uh, my, my, my nephew would say, my sanctified imagination. That little boy, I guess, you know, opened up that lunch out of his to eat. But somehow uh, the, the word of God was just, you know, filling him so that he could not even touch the dog. Yeah. He, he was so captivated by the teaching of Jesus. The lunch pad was opened and he was eating the bread of life instead of the staff of life. And, and somehow this disciple was close enough and he was sitting there uh, or standing there and was looking at the boy's lunch. His mouth was dripping for you know, one of those dumplings and a piece of the fish so, so that he could count five loaves, two fish, so that when report time came, he was able to say to Jesus, there's a boy. <laughs> there's a boy here. There's a boy here with five loaves and two fish. <laughs> and, and, and he won't even touch them. Jesus said, bring it. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. He said, what? Bring it. I, I just want to say this to you. Bring what you have. Yeah. But expect. 
expect much. Yeah. Expect big. Yeah. Expect big. Yeah. You don't need to ask a hotel to cater for thousands when you have a five rolls and two fish with Jesus. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Jesus is the best caterer that you have on church. You yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the woman said, you know, I've got a proper point. Hallelujah. As I said before, nobody has nothing. Everybody has something. I got a pot of oil. Yeah, nice. Now here is something. I did say it, but I'm going to repeat. Can I be careful what you borrow? You must also be very careful who you borrow from. Now, Elijah was going to instruct this woman to do investment. Hello? Yes. You cannot invest what you don't have. But invest what you have. Yes. But make sure that your investor is capable of supplying your demands. Yes. Yeah? Yes. The best one we know of is Jesus. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So, Elijah said to her, go borrow. Yeah. Go borrow. But here is where you need to be careful of the what you borrow. Go borrow uh, jobs, yeah. oil jobs. That's easy to return. Come on. Yeah. Come on, brother. Yeah. That's easy to return. Yeah. The, the, the only thing that could possibly happen is that a few might break. Yeah? yeah. But, but, but he said, borrow. And, 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 and he said, don't borrow just a few. Hello? Yeah. He said what? Borrow. When I got my topic, yeah. expect me yes. when you're going to invest in God. Expect me. Yes. God is not a small investor. No, sir. Me. God, the universal investor, is able to supply. Come on. All your needs exceedingly, abundantly, more than you can think or ask. Sometimes when you sit down and think of what you need and what you need and what you need and what you need and yet the Bible says God is able to do exceeding me. Yes. You know what exceeding me? Yes. To surpass. To yes. surpass. Yes. Exceeding me. And abundantly more than you can think. Is that really true God? You're up there hearing me. Is it really true that you can, if you can supply what I need more than I can think God? When the man draws up here, you're down here too. Hello! Yes. He's able. Yes. So, you are in danger. The creditor is coming. You have to borrow your way out. But be careful of what you borrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Borrow what you can pay back. Borrow what you can give back. Borrow from your neighbors. Be careful who you borrow from. Yeah? Some people, even if they have it, that you could swim in it, don't borrow a dime from them. Because they will complicate it so much that even after you pay back, you will have to pay tenfold and yet you will never be able to get out of it. I want to say this too, beloved. We need to think as a church. We need to think as a church. We keep saying we don't have this. We keep saying we don't have that. But if we would only acknowledge what we have and give it to God, God will be able to increase it and multiply it and addition it until we will be able to do more than we could think we could accomplish. We need to get together as a church, we need to get together as a people, we need to get together as a race and put what we have in the hand of the investor for the investor is able to multiply it so that we can survive. Yes. He said to the woman, borrow not a few, then go inside your house and shut the door upon yourself and your son yes. and from that which you have that pot of oil that you have we don't know what quantity of oil she had oh come on I wish I had a little bit more time to just go down the act 
spirituality of this thing with you. Maybe she had her last clutter of nuts. And she had just boiled it into oil. That's why it was still in the pot. But what is a pot of oil to the payment of debt? You know, just think about it. Most of us would say, I have nothing. But when she was asked, what do you have? Borrow vessels, close the door, and pour oil. Yeah. Now she knows that maybe she could get two or so liter of oil. So normally, Jackie, we would send for two bottles. But the prophet said, borrow not. Expand big. You have small. That's all right. But expand big. Jesus said, Your faith be small as a mustard seed. But with it, you can move big, tall, gigantic mountain. Amen. Amen. Expect big of a God. Is a God who delights in doing big yes. for his children. Amen. That woman poured oil. And she poured oil. And she poured oil. Oh my God. We have never heard of another oil refinery that continued to produce oil from a pot where there was no hose connected to the pot. Hello? Are you hearing me? There was no connection to the pot. Challenges. 
it doesn't mean that God has abandoned you. Turn to him. And I say to the church, we need to become proactive in helping the membership of the church with all of their issues, whether it be family, social, financial, in whichever the, whatever the issue. As Elisha was proactive in giving this woman godly counsel, the church needs to become involved in giving people counsel and instruction as to how to survive because we are living in a real world where real demands take real toll on our real mind and will really mess us up unless we can find that our God is realer than these. Amen. 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 The church must be God. Yes. And again, I just say to you, whatever your situation is, Remember, there is something that you have. Something. It doesn't have to be big. Yeah. It does not have to be big. But God has entrusted you with something mm -hmm. that you can invest yeah. in Him. Amen. Are you willing to invest that something in God today? Yes. If you are, then invest it. Stand up. Let your faith become active as you stand and say, God, and you might be able to identify the what you have. <laughs> oh, if I not be anything significant, but it is something. It might be just a little oil. Just a handful of flour. What's that? That's my last meal. Invest it. Yeah. There's a little song that we used to sing at school and uh, no, at church. Uh, one talent have I to take the sky. While others are blessed with ten of the rest. But why should I complain? Or from duty refrain? No, never. No, never. Not I. You invest what you have. Let us pray. God, we are investing what we have. And the realities of life, oh God, makes our investment look stupid because it's so insignificant. What is a little oil against debt? Oh God, what is a run against a kingdom with an army? Oh Father, what is a last meal to years of famine? He doesn't really seem as if it makes sense that we acknowledge these little things that we have. But if only we could see, oh God, that it is not the what we have, but the whom that we have to give the what we have to. Yeah. Help us, oh God, to know that you are able. Amen. You are able. Yeah. And if you were able to make what we have out of what was never, then God it means that you can make what we have into even more. And we thank you. Amen. So Lord, we offer ourselves, and you know us, you know us, sinful, wretched, blind, naked, stubborn, even at our best, we are like filthy rags. But Lord, we offer ourselves to you today. Yes, and Father, because we have your word, 
we expect them from you. Amen. And we claim it in Jesus' name. Amen.